Hello everyone and welcome to our new Ability Recreation Tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make the paralyzing cask used by this guy right here in the game Dota 2. The ability bounces around nearby enemies, stunning them and damaging them. The damage is increased every bounce. There is also a small delay before each jump and it flies on a arc trajectory towards its target. Let's jump right into it. Here we are in a new project I have set up with a demo scene that has a main camera, light, ground plane, and a game object that contains a bunch of spheres that will act as enemies. Inside my project folder, I have a materials folder with my ground and enemy material, my URP settings, the enemy script, which is very basic. Let's take a quick glimpse at it. The script is very simple. If my stun timer is smaller than zero, then I run a movement function which basically moves the enemy to a random position assigned by the wander function. Below, I deal damage to it using a float as well as increase the stun timer which in turn stops the enemy from moving. Pretty basic stuff. Let's start by creating an empty game object called cask. Reset its transform so that it is on the center of your map and I will move it up a bit so that it doesn't clip through the ground. Add a new particle system to the cask and rename it visuals. I will increase its duration and lifetime to 10 seconds and remove start speed. Under emission, remove its rate over time and add a burst of one particle. Uncheck shape so that they spawn at the center. Scroll down to render settings and change its render mode to mesh then select a sphere. For its material, I will use the default line material that comes with Unity so that we have a solid white circle. Enable trails and go down to render settings again to assign the trail material to be the default line as well. Under trail settings, we will check world space so that when we move it, we see the trail behind it, but it is too long and lasts forever so change its lifetime to something super low. I will do 0.025. Change its width over trail to a curve and pick one going down. Okay, looking much better now. I will set its start size to 0.25 because it is just way too big. Give your cask a sphere collider and check its trigger. I cannot see its radius very well, so let me disable the ground plane real quick. And now I will increase its radius. This will be the acquisition range. For us to be able to use on trigger inside the script later, we need to have a rigid body on either the enemy or the cask itself. So let's add a rigid body to this. Disable use gravity and enable its kinematic. Great, I will enable the ground plane again and add a c -sharp script called Paralyzing Cask to our cask game object. Open it and let's begin writing some code. We will begin by setting up some variables of type float that we will assign in the inspector later. Bounces, stun duration, base damage, damage addition per bounce, flying speed, rotation speed, time before bounce, target Y position, contact distance, and above this, set it to be a serialized field so that it is visible on the inspector. Below, we will create a public string called tag to check. We will also need another float, this one for a timer, the transform to follow, and a list of transforms. This is to store all the units within our trigger that can be assigned as the target. Lastly, a game object to reference our visuals. Inside start, we will assign the visuals to be the visuals we created earlier. Names must match. Now, if we do not have a target and the list of possible targets is bigger than zero, we create a new function of type transform. Inside here, set the target to be this new function. For this to work properly, we need to return a transform, so create a temporary variable of type transform called target to assign then return this. Now we need to assign it. We do this by getting a random transform from our possible targets, then remove the target from the list. 
This will remove the previous target, not the target to assign. Inside update, we first check if we assigned a target. If that is not the case, and our list contains more than zero, then we set the target like we did at the start. Inside here, we will do most of our work. First of all, we check if the wait timer is bigger than zero, and then we lower it over time. If it isn't, we check if our visuals are not enabled and enable them. We also check if our list contains this target, which shouldn't be the case because it could keep bouncing on the same target over and over and over again, so we have to remove it from the list. Below, we need to move and rotate our task. To move it on an arc trajectory, we need to get the distance between the target and our cask. Then we simply move this transform forward over time. To rotate it, we need to get the direction first. Then for its y-axis, we will add a value and multiply this by the distance. This means the further away the bigger the value, and as we get closer, then the smaller the value, right? This is how we create the arc trajectory. Check if the distance is smaller than the contact distance, which we will set in the inspector later, and if that is the case, we create a new function called bounce and add it here. Below this, we check if the possible target is smaller or equals to zero, in which case we create yet another function, this one called finish bounce. Inside the finish bounce, you could play sounds or maybe a particle system, and then delete the game object. Moving on to the bounce function, here you will damage your enemies. I do not know how you would do this in your own game, but in this example, if you remember, I have a function inside my enemy script that handles this. So I first assign this enemy script and we check if we do have assigned this enemy script, then we run our damage and stun functions. Below this, we check if our list has more than zero, then assign a new target. Lower the bounces, and also check if the bounces are equal or less than zero then call the finish bounce. And if we do not have any possible targets in our list, we also finish bouncing. Below this, we need to disable our visuals, increase its damage, and assign the wait timer to be the time before bounce. Almost done. We now need to add and remove to our list. We do this by calling on trigger stay. Inside here we do a few checks. First one is check if the tag is the same as the tag to check string. Then see if our list does not contain this collider's transform. And lastly, if our current target is not equals to this collider's transform. We simply add it to our list. Now to remove it we do a untriggered exit and inside here we simply need to check the tag. Alright, all done coding. Let's head back into Unity now. Let's set up our variables. We will do a crazy high amount of bounces, so it bounces a lot. Stun duration to 1, base damage to 1, addition to 1 as well. Flying speed, I will do 3. Rotation speed has to be something high so that the arc trajectory works best. Time to wait before bouncing to 1 second. The target Y position has to be something below 1. I found out 0.4 works best. Contact distance to something low. I'll do 0.4 as well. <laughs> and it's tagged to enemy because, well, my enemy spheres have the tag of enemy. Let me move the scene window to the side so we can see the arc trajectory a bit better and hit play. Nice. Now if we increase the Y position you will see it go higher up then come down fast as it gets close. That's why 0.4 works much much better. You can set these values to whatever you want. Make it move faster, wait time be less, damage more. I don't know, go play around with its values and change its visuals to better fit your game. And that's pretty much it for this video tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, thanks to my patrons for making all these videos possible, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.